Hi, Bill Sheriff, Executive Chairman of Encore Energy Corp. We're America's clean energy company. We have uh, two uh, uranium production facilities uh, in operation in South Texas. Uh, all of our operations are in situ recovery as opposed to conventional recovery. And uh, bringing on two of those within eight months, uh, essentially on time from what was promised quite a monumental feat. And now we're set to enjoy the revenue stream for both of those, including a pretty aggressive growth plan. A revenue generating public company? I've never heard of such a thing. Um, unbelievable. Uh, just about <laughs> Um, right. I, I, well, I, I, the you know few uh, years that we've had in the uranium game, uh, that it really is a bit of a novelty. So, uh, the the second South Texas project now producing um, uranium. What? Great, it's amazing. It's of course our uh, crown jewel, if you will. It's the uh, much larger property, uh, eighty thousand hectare property that's only been about uh, well less than ten percent really explored and developed and. Uh, Already has a pretty good past history with uh, our CEO, Paul Gorenson, having built the plant originally back in 2005 and now operating it again. And uh, it's come come right along and uh, we're, we're quite pleased with its progress. Right. OK, well, I kind of want this conversation to kind of stem around you know, ac economics, being a revenue reducer, being economic, um, cleaning up balance sheets, et cetera. Obviously, last time we talk, talked, it was around the, um, the, the boss transaction. Obviously, that changed things dramatically for you. Um, what what what's kind of been the the effects of that transaction? Well, it's been exactly as uh, we'd anticipated, and that it's really allowed us to advance our entire uh, group of projects. You know, not just the uh, Rosita and, and Alta Mesa that have you know essentially stolen the headlines with the with the production, but also moving ahead on our Upper Spring Creek, which will be the the next unit that comes into production at Rosita for the Rosita plant. Uh, and, uh, you know, our projects in South Dakota and, and Wyoming as well. So we're moving those along and, and uh, several others in Texas. At the same time, continuing to build, uh, importantly, on uh, the producing assets at uh, Alta Mesa and systematically adding to our initial production by the inclusion of additional wells. Okay, and obviously being a producer, it kind of changes the profile somewhat. It, and in fact, it changes a lot of things. I imagine share register, which, which I'd love to talk about in, in a second, but also the ability to actually... Um, transact and conclude on um, utility term contracts. So um, who are you selling to? Is it entirely US focused? Well, we do have one legacy contract that's with the trading company. Uh, that's uh, with uh, slightly un uh, about a million and a half pounds left over the next four or five years on that one. But uh, all the contracts that we've signed, and I believe there's six of them now, have been with US uh, nuclear utilities. And uh, those are the ones that, uh, you know, we all ship essentially to the same place, to the uh, conversion facility. Uh, and then it's inventoried under the uh, recipient's uh, account. Right. And, and talk to me about the kind of that flow of, of cash, because obviously you've done things like the boss deal tra transaction, for instance, um, you know, it helps sweat out the balance sheet. But cash flow is a, a wonderful thing. It's a rare thing with public companies is you obviously... If you you sell yellow cake yellow cake in in a, in a tin, um, you you send it off to um. So where's, where where's, where do you send it to? Uh, Metropolis, it's Illinois, Illinois for, for the most Metropolis. Part. Okay, okay, you're over at Metropolis. And when do you get paid? And how's that money flow well, into the company? It, it, there's some variety in that, and it's dependent upon the terms of the contract, of course. But uh, yeah. you know, typically, what uh, what we like to see is thirty day pay up on receipt. And, uh, you know, sometimes you'll see a 60 or perhaps even longer, but, and usually these deliveries are broken down through the year, uh, perhaps quarterly, sometimes semi-annually. Uh, here again, it's uh, typically, I'd say 30 to 60 day pay. And, and it, you know, the frequency of the deliveries is, is dependent upon the terms of the contract, as is the payment date. But, you know, we, we look for 30 day payments. Right. And, and what percentage of your production are you selling or, or forward selling? Well, essentially, all of our production uh, this year will go into these contracts. Uh, here again, uh, this is a ramp up year. Next year will be a ramp up year. So we're we're largely committed. Uh, I'd say 100% committed this year. Probably you know 90% next year, and then it falls off rather dramatically. Uh, we still have a, a increasing amounts uh, under contract as we go forward. With I think 2026 and seven being kind of the peak areas. But the production will grow faster than the increase in our uh, contracted pounds. So really this year is the, uh, is the only one that's fully contracted. Next year is really close to fully contracted. Then it, then it loosens up. Right, because I think now you've obviously built and gone into production two projects. Um, and you've shown that route to market. You're selling into the market. 
I guess he's trying to do two things in terms of that ramp up. One um, is show utilities that you can produce and can, can produce into those contracts consistently without hiccups. Um, and then two, I guess you're going to have to show that you're going to be able to step up the production levels. So let, maybe let's talk about the production levels. How do you ramp it up from that side of things, the things that are that in your control? Well, I think it's uh, kind of important to look at the two plants very differently. Rosita here again is a central processing plant that brings in satellite material from other uh, nearby or within, let's say, 100 miles uh, currently. It could go further than that with current uranium prices, but within a 100-mile radius of the plant. Uh, the production that you see out of Rosita will come with chunky increases. That is, the well field that's in production at Rosita is not going to grow. You're going to see other well fields come on so that you're going to get significant jump up in the in the production when we do add an additional project, and such as Upper Spring Creek. And there's two parts of that. And like I say, we're actively now moving one of those forward now. Uh, that's very different compared to Alta Mesa, which is a much bigger uh, plant and project, uh, uh, you know, a little about twice as big as uh, the Rosita plant in terms of capacity. That is all piped into the central plant. So what it is, is it's a trunk line going from the well field into the central plant. And while we've put a significant number of wells in and we're running the plant at about 20, 25% of capacity, when we add additional wells, we don't have to put a whole nother well field on. We can tie a handful of wells, 10, 20, into the system simply by adding the plumbing as we drill them and complete them, which will incrementally ramp up the, the production so that you'll see a steady increase towards uh, the end of this year and continuing into next year as, as we move on into to other well fields until we hit capacity of the plant. Right. So obviously this has been about, you know, um, yeah, I guess sticking to learning, yeah, yeah, doing things incrementally, slowly, making sure you don't fall over. Um, so where are you, how, much, how, many, how many cows do you produce at the moment and what are you looking to step up to? What's the, what's the next level and the level after that? Well, and here again, the, the Alta Mesa is going to be just more or less a gradual increase. So it's a little bit more difficult to say where we're going to be and, and exactly the, the time frame. But you know, we're looking at uh, you know, probably four or 500,000 pounds this year. We got, we're probably about 30 days behind on starting Alta Mesa, which was... Uh, you know, about being a year ahead, given most uh, most projects in this industry, when you set a date, if you're within 30 days, you're actually ahead. Um, and that's about what happened to us on Rosita as well. So, you know, we'll be we'll be happy with that 400,000 pounds. Um, obviously, we'd like to get the 500, but somewhere in that neighborhood. And then, um, you know, that's our that's our objective. And then next year, of course, we'd, we'd certainly like to see that, uh, you know, double if, if uh, you know, if not even beyond that, that, w- that would be our objective. And when was, the, when was the end game here in terms of how you position yourself? You're a, you're a U.S. producer selling into U.S. utilities, and they're going to look at you and say, right, by the end of next year, it could be, you know, a, mil- a million pound producer. That's that's a good start, right? But may- maybe, I don't know what your ambitions are or what the expectations are. Where would you, where can this thing go? Well, we, we think we can uh, take it up to the three million pound a year mark. Uh, you know, that's our goal within about three years. It's still a drop in the bucket in terms of uh, U.S. total demand. Uh, and ultimately, uh, you know, we can see the future bringing in uh, our Wyoming operations, uh, both at Gas Hills and uh, at the uh, Wyoming, South Dakota, Dewey Burdock project. Uh, each of those would be incrementally another million pounds. So we, we can see the assets we have being brought online to, to take us up to that five million pound area. And, uh, you know, that's going to require building additional plants in, in Wyoming. But uh, we do have the capacity of the three million pounds uh, a year in, in uh, South Texas uh, already uh, essentially built. We'll have to do a bit of modifications to... Uh, uh, to Rosita to get the capacity up there or recommission the Kingsville plant. But, uh, you know, over a three-year period, we think that's achievable. Right. And, and the portfolio that you've got, are you kind of satisfied with that? Because there's a lot of conversation around um, Wyoming as, as a center for, you know, en- 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 energy for the, for the U.S. market, right? We've got Bill Gates in town saying he'll spend, saying he'll spend as much as it takes on, on, on his uh Terra Power project. You've got a lot of small um, ISR projects wanting, well, they're cash constrained, but they're wanting they're wanting to do a lot in, in Wyoming. How, how do you read the kind of landscape for maybe not necessarily just Wyoming, but you know the the consolidation of projects in the U.S. put, in, put into better hands? Uh, my personal opinion is if you fast forward down the road four or five years, and I, I do think we're in a multi-decade growth uh, 
pattern here. You know, we're going to have some down periods like we're experiencing now, small downturn. Probably su suffer some more severe ones over the course of the next decade. Uh, but overall, we're going to have a far above average growth uh, trend in the nuclear fuel business for the next few decades, I believe. And that's what the company's built on is that premise. Um, so I think, uh, you know, fast forward five years down the road, there's two ISR producers in the U.S. Uh, you know, if you look at it now, there's essentially five or so. But I, I think consolidation will occur, um, you know, at, at who, when, where. Those are the details that, you know, yet to be uh, uh, yet to unfold. And uh, I think, you know, you're going to clearly see, uh, you know, relative valuations change as we go through that five year period. Uh, we've, you know, it's no secret we've uh, built this company uh, with a significant amount of M&A already and previous efforts uh, back in the 05, uh, 06, 07 market, uh, even even more M&A activity than uh, the same group of people here were involved with. So, you know, we clearly like M&A, but at the same time, we aren't going to get bigger just for getting bigger's sake. It has to be accretive to us in terms of our uh, timeline for pounds uh, into the market or uh, or a number of pounds uh, in terms of actual production immediately. And if you go back and look at all of our M&A, it's all led to that and, uh, you know, followed that. And even the, the Boss JV that you mentioned earlier, you know, we view that as essentially, you know, a cousin to an M&A transaction because it uh, certainly was accretive in terms of our timeline to production because we're able to deploy that additional cash across the spectrum of our assets as opposed to having to go hand to mouth on one project. It's that's interesting that kind of your, your take on the landscape, and I, and I appreciate you going into you know how how you view how how you play that landscape. What's it? What is that doing or saying to generalist investors? Because I, I mentioned your share register, I suspect is evolving um, currently as people buy into this sort of general move towards nuclear as a, as a baseload um, energy source for the U.S.? You know, it, it clearly is evolving. And, you know, we're awfully glad to have the resource investors that are backing us and have backed us for, for you know, many years and uh, some of them more recently. But it's a, it's a certainly a great core foundation. But, you know, frankly, over the last three or four months, the vast majority of the inquiries have come from generalist funds and uh, primarily here in the U.S., although some international flavor as well. And uh, you know, when you look at the pool of capital, the U.S. generalist funds, you know, billion dollar fund is, you know, mom and pop grocery store. And, you know, I'm not belittling it at all. I'm just saying the number of the billion dollar funds in the U.S. is incredible. I don't know. You know, I was recently at a conference on the West Coast, and I, I think virtually everyone I met with was, uh, you know, one to ten billion dollars. And uh, the type of questions we're getting, the type of interest in the, the company and the project is, is markedly different. Um, it's it's more of a nuts and bolts. They they really are kind of industry agnostic, if you will. They buy the general nuclear premise, but they really want to evaluate the uh, investment within that sector based upon good old fashioned PE. What are your what's your earnings? What's your EBITDA? You know, wh what does this look like from a dollars and cents uh, equation going forward? And that's a different type of question. Certainly, our resource investors are interested in that, but they're a lot more focused and. and their whole premise is getting in a bit earlier to enjoy that growth phase to get to where we are now in, in the next few years where we uh, you know, get up close to our production uh, capacity of our plants. Whereas the new guys coming in, the generalist funds, they, they really just look at a dollar and cents value. I mean, we could be making shoes or, or uh, you know, tires or, or uh, you know, bumpers for automobiles. They, they don't really care. They've just have bought into the fact that we're going to be in a good, healthy environment for a prolonged period, that being the nuclear space. Now, within that, they want to know who's going to make some money. And they want to know, you know what's your earnings per share, the old-fashioned stuff. Uh, and so it's a, it's a different, somewhat different approach, uh, certainly a different focus. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's clearly been the bulk of the uh, incoming calls over the last few months, and I think that will continue. And, you know, they aren't the first to the party, but they, they bring a pretty good uh, presence when they're there. I, I kind of wish it w wasn't old fashioned. I wish it stayed in fashion because making money is literally what Sure enough, it doesn't go out of style. Uh, it just seems to, yeah. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, um, yeah certainly closer to my heart, um, companies that actually not understand how they're going to make money and um, do the right things to ensure that they do. Um, right, okay, so, so that, that's the kind of landscape there um, for for you and you. You know, we've talked about your your company. Now, there's a you're focused on U.S. Um, utilities, and that'll probably be your entire um, customer base. But for those guys, 
they are in a bit of a bit of a bit of, a, bit of um, a period of uh, understanding. You can got we we talked ad nauseum about Russian, um, you know, the R- R- Russian sanctions, etc., and trying to work out whether waivers are in or out of fashion as far as um, utilities are concerned. Do you think that utilities will be able to take advantage of any waivers and still be able to kind of suck up a lot of the kind of Eastern, um, in Russian specifically, uh, uranium enriched or otherwise? Well, here again, you know, the enrichment's the real critical key and then conversion and then, you know, raw material yellow cake uh, in that order. But, uh, you know, I I keep saying, uh, you know, before before, uh, 10X came out or or Mr. Putin's trading arm came out and, you know, indicated they'd be uh, uh, a little difficult to deal with, I, you know, I I think I was one of the few voices saying that there was any significant chance. And I, at the time, thought there was about a 98% chance Russia would respond. Um, I'd say I'm still with that point of view. Uh, Given the current world situation, unless that changes... I don't see why Russia would send a, a single gram of material to the West. Uh, it's one of their few economic tools they can use to, you know, jab us back in the eye. And, you know, here again, I'm no Putin fan and you know, not a fan of, of what they've done, but taking all emotion out of it and looking at the reality of where we are, why would they sell to the West? The revenue to them is inconsequential compared to oil and gas. So I, I, I would leave it at that, uh, you know, and, Exactly where we're going to come out will always be a bit of a veiled proposition just because uh, you know, the entire nuclear fuel game is a bit of a poker game and, and everyone keeps their cards pretty close to their chest. Um, you know, we're, we're enjoying still a, a very nice contracting uh, term market and, you know, still establishing better floors and ceilings uh, on, our, on our portfolio, even though there's a bit of a, a quiet period in the market and a bit of a correction. Yeah, you know, we're we're still seeing superior contract terms than to what we saw when spot was at its high. So, you know, it you never know exactly who's got what and you know, just like you aren't ever allowed to disclose the exact terms of your contract. So uh, you know, I think the utilities uh, are are probably putting a good face on it and uh, some of them are extremely well uh, you know, supplied for the next few years, some of them not so. And uh, that's pretty typical of, of any industry. Some are better prepared than others. Uh, and I think some are more reliant upon some sort of positive uh, resolution of the geopolitical issues at hand. I'm not sure that's going to happen. We don't necessarily want to sit and talk about you know R- Russia and their relationship with China, the Russian relationship with with Kazakhstan, and you know whether or not lots of this uranium is going to be heading east instead of west, and you know who's going to suck up the the um, you know the the African production um, as well. Who, who knows? And what I'm interested in for you know you um, and yeah, and, and I'm sure investors want to know for the for investment purposes is what's the what's the kind of net reaction from the utilities got to be to to kind of shift the this price? We we kind of I say we're sort of we've reset. It's great, you know. It's, it's sort of low, low 80s. It's great, you know. You know, a year ago, I'd have taken that, and it, you know, for sure. But given we've you have seen a little bit of ankle, we've seen a little bit of excitement around you know 106 dollars, you know, at the beginning of this year. It kind of feels like we've we it's been a it's been a failed year, but it hasn't. Right, it hasn't. But when does it move again, and, and what do you think is going to move it? Well, and, and here again, I think spot price gets 98 percent of the. Uh, uh, attention and really has about 2% of the merit in the market. Yep. So it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a false flag, if you will. And I, I think, you know, regardless of how the geopolitical issues play out, I think the important thing to remember and the reason that we're focused on the U.S. is it is the largest market in the world. And regardless of how any of those geopolitical issues play out, they are a concern. They're on everyone's discussion topic list. And as a result, the utilities, the, their best approach, regardless of how any of those things turn out, of which none of us have really any control over, there's going to be an emphasis on acquiring domestic supply. And that is the only answer they have to the unanswerable questions of how is the geopolitical chess game going to play out? And that is to get more and more domestic supply so they don't have to worry about how it turns out. And so we, we, we think it's, you know, we're the right place and the right right time and selling to the right customer group and that's why we're focused 100 percent in the us yeah okay and and for, for the for the rest of the market the we won't be in production anytime soon market of uranium companies um they're gonna have to hang on for what and hope for what well 
you know, I mean, I, I think it, it's, you know, it's largely, you have to look at it on an individual basis. I mean, there are a lot of marginal projects out there that $80 is going to be not a bankable number. Um, yeah, on paper, it might work out. You might have a $20 margin, but no one's going to fund you on a $20 margin. Um, at least I can't imagine they would. They certainly don't on that type of a margin in the gold business. So um, it, it's highly unlikely. Now, there's a lot of very good projects as well uh, with some quali- and, and fewer that uh, are really good projects in good hands of technically capable people. I think those are going to march right through. And, uh, you know, you probably know the same number of, uh, on, on your list as on mine that are going to make it. So, uh, and there'll be a surprise along the way. One or two that we think will make it, something will happen and they won't. One or two that we think are long shots will pull it off and, and you know, be producers. So, uh, here again, we, we don't really keep that keen of an eye on the international uh, competitors. Uh, we, we concentrate on our market. We've got our hands full paying attention to the U.S. market. Uh, we're aware of it, and I'm sure Paul and, and the board keep uh, you know a bit, bit tighter finger on the pulse of, a, of the world markets. But you know our customer base is here in the U.S., and, and that's what we uh, really pay uh, you know very detailed attention to. Well, it's, do you know what you, you you make a good point, and 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 yes, that we do have a list of who we think will and won't make it, and and I think you you guys in the industry and sector know exactly which assets will or won't make it. Um, not to mention. The, the usual kind of shortages of skilled skilled labor, et cetera, people who, who can actually do it. Um, and the quality of some of the reporting as well, whether they be um, economic studies or not, is, is as in multiple um, metals, the questionable. questionable it, varies, shall we say. it certainly varies, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's a nicer way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, uh, we look at there's some train wrecks coming. Um, and it's probably from not not here. You thank you though. So, um, all, all good stuff. Well, like I mean, so I mean, just setting setting back here, um, Bill. Obviously, great. You know, getting into production, getting into revenue, sorting out balance sheet, um, selling to U.S. Uh, utilities into what is a huge demand market over there with not a lot of competition for you guys at any, any, anytime soon, it looks like. Um, what, you, what are your expectations for the rest, rest of this year? Just You're going to stick to what you know and head down? Absolutely. You know, we, as I mentioned, m and is always on our mind, so we always keep track of, it's a dance card, you know, who, who would we like to dance with? You know, we, we keep that in mind, but, uh, you know, here again, we aren't under any pressure or any urgency to, to do that, but we, we keep a, a, certainly aware on a frequent basis of the relative valuations. And, uh, you know, as those change, so, so does our desire or, or you know, our, our motivation gets stronger or weaker, depending on the relative valuations. Uh, and we're in this for the long haul. I mean, it's a long game uh, for the rest of this year. Um, you know, we're, we're quite pleased with the current price. Obviously, more is better. We aren't, we aren't any different than anybody else in that regard. You know, more is, more is better. Uh, but we're going to keep our head down and uh, keep uh, drilling wells and connecting them to uh, the uh, production lines, uh, tr- the trunk lines at Alta Mesa and keep moving that forward. Uh, keep working diligently on uh, Upper Spring Creek so that uh, we can uh, – provide feed to the Rosita plant, additional feed uh, next year on that. And uh, keep our head down and keep keep uh, on track. Uh, you know, the strategy that we've laid out is is working. It's uh, one that we've accomplished, uh, uh, I won't say 100% on time every time, but we've, we're certainly beating the averages and, and uh, uh, we're quite quite happy with what, where we've come and the time we've come and the game plan we have. So uh, I don't think it's a time to change anything. I think it's a time just to keep our head down and not worry about, you know, intermittent fluctuations in the market. Uh, we've got a multi-decade story here. We believe that, and that's how we're going to execute. Given funded to do all of the above and uh, with a much healthier balance sheet, no doubt. It also Definitely helps. Definitely helps. Definitely well, helps when you sleep a little bit at night. <laughs> you, you do. you got choices. you got options. Uh, Bill, lovely to see you as always. Uh, thanks for the update, and uh, congrats on the um, route to market. We love that. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate it.